know it's been a while, now I'm mixing up the drink I just need a girl who gon' really understand I just need a girl who gon' really understand I'm What is the deal? Beautiful people, it's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined Let's talk about the Panasonic G7 and as always, you guys know, we don't get into the super complex reviews around here, the super techie stuff. There's plenty of other channels that are way uh, more qualified than I am to dig into those specs and really benchmark a lot of the claims of the manufacturer. But I, I want to give you some perspective on how I ended up with a Panasonic G7. And I, I want to want to share my thoughts with you on how it performs within those parameters. So back a while back i wanted to introduce uh 4k to our various channels and uh if your ears are pointing up when you hear various channels check the shameless plug by the way check the description uh there's links to all of our other channels our technology stuff our gaming stuff sneaker stuff and our accessories watches sunglasses whatever so um i wanted to introduce 4k because i felt like 4k uh at this time, this was about maybe six or seven months ago. It was it was about time. It was about ready, right? Uh, consumers are getting these QHD displays on their phones. Sure, it's not 4K, but they were capable of higher resolutions. And uh, 4K TVs are quickly coming down in price, and I would say are the norm today. If you would go into a Best Buy or wherever you would buy your TV, chances are you're going to pick up a 4K TV, unless you're you're not doing so for specific reasons. But nonetheless, uh, I felt like it was time to evolve the channel yet again uh, to to give it that that you know that growing ability as as the medium becomes uh, more and more robust. So I was looking for uh, a camera that could really really join me in in that journey and um i had i had a budget yes uh it was about at the time was about 700 dollars, and and i didn't want to break the bank because i wanted a video specific tool so the thing about when i say video specific it, it was going to live in the house and sometimes if we were doing an outdoor review of something then we would use, uh, we would take it outdoors. But it wasn't going to be about photography for me because I've, I have my Sony, I have a full frame Sony. Uh, at the time, I also had an NEX. So I was fine. Uh, I was fine with my photography. I just needed something specifically for video. And uh, I was very interested to stumble upon the Panasonic G7 when I was doing my research. And it, it was it was an absolute beast of a find. You know, this was at a time where the Panasonic GH4 was uh, sort of the unofficial industry standard in terms of DSLRs and shooting for uh, shooting for video on on digital cameras. And the G7 was pretty much a step down from that in, in specs. And it was missing just minor things that I didn't care about. Uh, for instance, like S-Log ability and I think some stabilization. But I really didn't care about that because I don't do much of like the blogging and walking around stuff. And even so, on the Panasonic side of things, the lenses offer stabilization. Sure, it gets better with the, the camera and the lens in combination. But, you know, I'm not, I don't have it strapped to the front of a Jeep and I'm, I'm going off-roading. So I didn't need extreme stabilization uh, so yeah the, the the panasonic g7 came about as a as a worthy contender i went ahead and purchased it and i have never been happy or more happy with the video solution uh, i mean if you if you look at this thing uh, one thing i want to point out really quickly is this camera is god ugly <laughs> i don't it is the least attractive uh camera i own in my tool set and that's okay because what it <laughs> What it lacks in in sheer beauty, it makes up for in raw functionality. Uh, this thing is this thing's a joy to use, and it really starts with the weight of it. Uh, I can't stress to you how light, how lightweight this camera really is. I mean, even with the battery in it, you pick it up, it feels like a toy. Uh, I, there's probably almost no metal on this thing. Uh, the, the, the camera itself is super light. As you know, the micro four third lenses are all super light, super tiny, super small. In fact, you see here, the lens I'm using is this collapsible, uh, what is it, 14 or 32 or whatever that focal length is. Uh, but I like the fact that if I'm not using it, you can collapse, you can collapse in that lens. 
and just go about your day. It takes up so much less room in your bag or wherever. So that's that's always cool. Uh, the the uh, fully, what do you call that? The articulate and display. My God, I miss that. When we first started the YouTube channel, uh, the camera we, we first started was a T3i. And then we later upgraded to a T4i because of autofocus uh, or servo focus when, when doing video. And... One of the things that those cameras had that made it so suitable for video was the articulating screen. And this is how I'm shooting the, the face on video. When you see me sitting in front of the camera, I actually have I have the articulating screen display out and face toward me so I can see what the camera is seeing. So that gives me the ability to, to really keep an eye on if it's in autofocus, if it's drifting, if it's not. Particularly if I'm recording videos like this, for some reason, those <laughs> that joker face on, on my Sony's, <laughs> it always wants to focus on that joker face. So I always had to sort of move the camera like this into the corner. Uh, but here, I, I can capture much more of the scene because I, I quite love my blue door. Uh, to Narnia and I want my damn blue door in the shot but uh, and this is a testament to how much better uh, how much more suited Panasonic has been for video versus my Sony or any of the other cameras is it almost never drifts off to that back it always keeps the, the autofocus locked on my face and and that's super cool so yeah the articulating display uh, plays a big part there for me uh, and then other than that, there's some there's some dope choices in the design of the camera that I think are cool. Um, the 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 buttons you have the the those those slider buttons on the front and the back that you can adjust if you're in manual your you can adjust your f stop and your shutter. And then there's the mode dial. And then there's also off to the left there's this extra dial for like the picture, the uh, I, I don't know the the, the different uh, drive modes and. Uh, those drive modes are pretty dope, actually. The 4K one, I, I think, is is quite genius, and it is a it is a video mode with the intent to pull stills from the 4K video. And I always thought, why the hell would you want that when you can shoot something up to like some crazy shutter speed? But I have tested it once or twice, and I can say it's really, really good. Uh, if you you can just sort of you go through each frame in the 4K video and pull out that 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 still uh it does give me quite a bit of uh detail which i thought was surprising so good on panasonic for that uh and then there's various uh the back of the camera is all the regular stuff but there's various uh function modes that function buttons that you can use for whatever you need so you know the design of the camera is is fairly good it's not it's it has a very comfortable grip uh but i wouldn't say the the camera itself is my favorite uh, my favorite camera to hold, but the grip is comfortable and the fact that it's so light means you can hold it for such a very long time. No complaints there at all. Now, uh, I'm not a videographer, you know, I, I sort of learn, I learn at a steady pace and I'm learning the, the things about video, uh, enough about video to get stuff done here on our channels. But, you know, I, I do have this interest and, and sort of this or this fantasy to, to one day go out and just shoot a bunch of dope video and compile it into something meaningful. And I have full faith that this G7 is the tool to do so. Um, but the thing about this review that I, the direction I really want to stare at is uh, I was very shocked and pleased with the Olymp I'm sorry, <laughs> the Olympus, the Panasonic's G7. Uh, performance as a video as a of a photo camera stills now it like i said i wanted a tool that was specifically for video and i almost did little to no research on the picture quality on this camera but one day i just decided you know it's a camera sitting in my house let me just take this thing out and see what it's capable of so i grabbed uh my two primes that i use on my olympus which are the olympus 45 millimeter which is equivalent to about a 90 inch a great portrait lens. Uh, and I grabbed the 12 millimeter, which is equivalent to uh, about a 24. And those are both fast primes. The 45 is rated at a 1.8 and the 12 millimeter is rated at a 2.0. Uh, 
So I went out and they're, they're pretty good glass. And I went out and I was, guys, I was really shocked. Um, the Olympus performed beautifully. Why do I keep saying Olympus? The Panasonic performed beautifully. Uh, so much so, uh, if you guys are on the channel for a while, no doubt you may have seen my Olympus EM10 uh, Mark II review. One of the things that I suffered with while reviewing that camera, and I still do suffer with today because it is my day-to-day -day street photography camera and what I generally have in my bag, is the autofocus sucks on that thing. Uh, it, it just latches on to random things and it, it's very inconsistent. The things it latches on to, it's very frustrating so much so that I don't really rely on the autofocus that much. I use center focus and I just recompose the shot. Um, it was a complete joy when going out shooting for a few days with the G7 to actually have uh, the camera make the, the right choices. It almost always knew what I wanted in focus when I when I hit that focus button. So that was cool. Uh, for a second there, I was thinking that um, it was an issue with Micro Four Thirds and the focus system, but now I, I know it's just an issue with the Olympus, uh, that particular model, because I haven't tested any other Olympuses. Uh, but yeah, this this guy performed well. Um, the autofocus was well. The image quality. Uh, so the image quality compared to my my Olympus, I would say, is fairly, fairly close. Although I prefer the I would prefer the the colors of the Olympus. I feel like the images coming out of the G7 were a bit sharper, which was interesting to see. And also there is the the noise consistency of the Panasonic was better than the Olympus. But uh, when pushing the camera in extreme, in very extreme uh, low light situations, uh, I did see quite a bit more noise in the Panasonic than I did in the Olympus. Uh, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. Once you're dealing with noise, you're dealing with noise anyway, so I know how to get around it. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was a, a very good camera to shoot with. Uh, the the fact that it was so lightweight made it such a joy to just hold for for long periods of time uh, the battery life seemed to be a, a bit better than the olympus for sure um, but you know there, there isn't anything i can say that stood out about this camera that that really made me say oh you know this if you're gonna get this for for stills i would i would stay away from this uh, i think it was it was a very a very good a very good performer um, what I can say though is the the sensitivity of the EVF. So when when taking the camera and holding it up to your eye, uh, there was definitely a lag or a little delay in when the the display would switch from the the display itself to the EVF. Uh, and it was a little annoying. I'm, I, you're probably looking at like a, a a quarter of a second, and it may not sound like much, but it's not as instant as any of the other digital cameras or mirrorless cameras that I've used. And, and I think uh, I think that's something to, to look out for. Um, but yeah, the the buttons are easy to use the for photography and at least. And I just thought it was a it was a really good camera. I was definitely shocked, uh, especially when you you given the fact that when you hear Panasonic, uh, you think you or those of you in the know you think specifically about video. Uh, but here it is. The, this guy, the G7, is 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 actually quite a little beast at at street photography and other types of photography, especially if you put some really good lenses on there. So, I enjoyed my time shooting with this. You know, like I said in the beginning of the review, I'm not here to give you guys a super technical breakdown. I'm here to tell you that uh, this thing is a absolute beast for video, and at the price, that $500 price tag that you can find it for right now. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find something that could perform this well in the video market for that price. And also, uh, it takes really good pictures. Like, how about that? So for someone out there, this guy is pretty much a very robust, all around great camera. And uh, I, I, I really love it for that. And I'm glad that I have it in my tool set. So yeah, like the video if you like it. Uh, join the conversation, any of you guys out there who shoot Panasonic. 
leave some comments give me some tips on anything you thought i could improve on or even if there's something i mentioned that you know there's a way to get around it just leave it in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel we really appreciate the 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 support it helps us grow and yeah my name is ramon and i'm out of here peace if i had to describe lifestyles to find i would say it is a dream come true uh, to have a platform where we can talk about the things that we love and we can share with people who also love the things we love the way we love and just have conversations that matter and go back and forth and grow as a community it's it's been a pleasure it's been a dream and i just want to thank everyone that's involved for rocking out with us